Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of Park Parents Live with Campus Living and Environmental Health and Safety. Um, my name is Carter Fenwick. I'm the Associate Director of Parent Family Programs. Today, we are addressing some concerns that we have received about air conditioning units in some of the residence halls. So with me today, we have Aaron Lucier. You're probably used to seeing him. Uh, Director of Housing Operations here at ECU. And then we have a new face. We have Mike Lewis from the Office of Environmental Health and Safety. Did I get that right? That's actually my brother. Uh, I'm Phil. Phil Lewis, yeah. sorry. We had a last name. This is Phil Lewis. Um, so if you're watching live, feel free to put um, any of your questions into the comment section. We have some colleagues who are answering them there. And then if you're watching recorded, you can still put your questions into the comment section. My office gets that notification so I can address your questions there as well. Um, so we are socially distanced. I'm going to step away so I can take my mask off so you can hear me clearly. I'm gonna throw them some questions and they're gonna answer them for you. And so once I'm out of the shot, they'll take their mask off because we're all social distance. Um, so I'm gonna head out and ask my first question. So we're talking about the air conditioning units in our residence halls, like I mentioned. Just kind of go over what the types of residence halls um, and the air conditioning units have. What are they? Okay. Well, there's three types. Um, there's central air, um, and those are in um, uh, Jarvis and Fleming Hall. And that's a centralized system with filters and a room down the hall. Um, so like a, in a maintenance room and uh, that's uh, in Jarvis and Fleming. And then there's individual fan play units on the first floor of Jones and in Ballard Hall, Scott Hall, Umstead Hall, Cotton Hall, and College Hill Suites. Uh, and then the last is the rest of the buildings have window units. Um, and those window units um, are for air conditioning and heat is provided um, in all the buildings uh, with window units except for Green Hall that in a second, but um, the window units uh, provide air conditioning, and then they have steam or hot water heat um, units typically right below the windowsill, um, and that's a um, non, uh, there's no fan in that unit that uses convection heat to heat the room when, when the unit comes on. And then the last um, in Green Hall, the air conditioners um, are also for the heat units, so it's a window unit that does air conditioning and heat, that's the only difference in that building, it doesn't have that hot water heat. Gotcha. Um, and then what else for the rest of the halls? You said they're just window units in the rest of the halls? Window units um, in all the other buildings other than green that I didn't mention. So that would be Cotton and Jarvis, uh, not, not Cotton, uh, Clement and uh, Fletcher and um, uh, uh, White, um, Tyler, um, the upstairs in Jones, a Legacy Hall, they all have a window unit with that um, radiator, um, that hot water or steam radiator. Lots of different AC units, lots of different ways that we keep our students cool and warm in all the residence halls. Exactly. Um, so obviously these go through a lot of wear and tear. Multiple students use them, you know, throughout the year. They're usually two students in a room, so they're messing with it. Um, and then, you know, they go through the whole school year. Sometimes they sit a little um, unused over the summer, and then a whole new crop of students come in and use them. So they go through a lot of wear and tear. So what are um, the pre preventative measures that you guys take to keeping um, each of the units running well throughout the year? Well, the overall is um, the all the types of units are basically on an order system, that they're checked and serviced um, from a perspective of changing out the filters on a roughly a quarterly. It doesn't work out perfectly that it's that, but it's, it's a a targeted quarterly um, check and therefore um, depending on use as well so if that building or the units are down for an extended period they might have to get visit but the target is a quarterly visit and that is a, a check of the filter um, a check of the unit that it's operating and uh, uh, any cleaning that would be involved with that um, the central systems are definitely on that quarter system um, and then probably even a more um, the, the uh, Jarvis and Fleming, where those units would definitely be, um, the filters are being pulled in those central rooms on a regular basis. Gotcha. Um, so if a student has a concern, they reach out to maintenance. You know, they tell their RA, their coordinator, and say, hey, there's something weird and they want to have it fixed. Actually, we prefer them, the students to call that into the neighborhood service office directly. So we, we were losing a translator in between. Mm -hmm. So um, the neighborhood service offices um, take those requests and put them into, into the work order system. And so for College Hill, that would be 252-328-4044. For our Central West, that would be 252-328-4022. And those go to, um, that person takes that work order and puts it in. And that means they have your students' information. So we want their information so we can do any follow-ups or we know 
So if we go for a concern and we do follow up, we can say, okay, it's Paul in the room. All right, let's make sure we've checked with Paul and make sure we're finding out a little bit more deeper information. Um, but, so that's the taking of the concern, but then if we get a concern that specifically mentions mold and mildew, we bring in environmental health and safety. Um, and Phil can talk a little bit more about what they, um, our partners are doing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, when we're called in to, to respond to a mold complaint, we'll, we'll typically begin by doing a visual inspection of the DP area, looking for obvious signs of mold growth, uh, water intrusion, primarily focusing on the water intrusion because you must have water to propagate the mold growth, okay? So we'll also do some standard uh, monitoring for temperature, humidity, uh, also uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, the, the CO2, carbon dioxide, is an indicator of what type of air exchange you have in the area. Make sure you get enough fresh air in the, in the room. Temperature, humidity, we want, we want it within a, a certain standard. So uh, if we do identify any active mold growth, first we try to address the moisture intrusion issue, whether it's a ruptured plumbing line or roof leak or condensation or excessive humidity. Uh, we try to try to attack the root problem uh, of any issues that we identify. Gotcha. Um, so I know we mentioned in a letter, is it normal for mold to be in these units? Mold is, is a naturally occurring thing in the environment. So there are mold spores outside. Anything outside can get inside as well. But to propagate mold growth, you have to have moisture. So moisture control is the challenge. Um, so it's very important that we have early detection, early notification. So if a student should have an issue in the room, like a roof leak, a window leak, if there's an issue with the AC unit, if it's not cooling properly, if it's not heating properly, we need to get that notification early before the problem does Mm -hmm. is created. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned identify it early and inform early. So if there is something that seems concerning in that unit, call NSO and get maintenance over there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Is there anything else that students can do um, outside of that to help keep their unit running correctly? Well, certainly there's an ideal setting for the units. Uh, we don't want them to be too cold, too hot. And I'm not sure what type of control the students have over the Depends on the building, yeah. um, but the window units are locked into a certain temperature range. Uh, they're pre-programmed to be locked into a certain temperature range, and the other buildings are meant set locked in, uh, from central system to be within the university standards. But I mean, there's other things you can do, and we've talked about this quite a bit. You know, the students uh, not keeping your window open to maintain the temperature in the room. If your room is too cold, turn the, the change the unit setting. And I've seen where students, in a few cases, have tried to manage the room temperature by using the window and the air conditioning and some heating factors. That's not going to help your humidity control. The other things, um, uh, the, the, the other enemies um, of mold and mildew growth is um, moisture control, as, as, as Phil mentioned, um, but also um, air circulation. So you know, keep a fan running. I mean, it, it, that can help your room, particularly um, you know, uh, if the rooms were a little bit moister outside, it's going to be a little moister inside. Having a lot of rainy days, which we have had a pretty dry fall. Yeah. Uh, but if we're having a lot of wet rainy days, you know, opening up your closets a little bit, not putting away a towel and on your into your closet wet, all those kind of things, but keeping that air circulation. The last thing that's an enemy of mold and mildew is light. So if you're gonna be out of your room for a few hours or you're going away for the weekend, open up the blinds in your room and let a little light in. And those, those are all things that sort of help spike that mold and mildew growth in the room. Possibly. The possibility, yeah. right. po the possibility of mold and mildew growth. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also building content. So it's just very important to keep the room tidy, organized, clean. Don't leave food laying out, things along those lines. Mm -hmm. Just general cleanliness Cleanse. rules, which I'm sure our parents have worked hard to instill in, in their Absolutely. students. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, that wet piece of laundry in a laundry pile will can cause mold or mildew. And that's mm -hmm. just a reality of that. that can, once again, that's humidity and water. And Um, so I think we covered kind of all the questions I had. Are there any closing thoughts that you all have about, you know, the health and safety of our students in their rooms with their AC units? And like I said, any more of those, those tips that our parents can remind their students of as they're living in our halls? 
We don't. It's rare that we find hold and mildew. Mm -hmm. um, it, at least, in, it, um, you know, when when things are going well. I mean, at, we've had hurricanes and tropical storms, and we haven't had any of those this year. So. Knock on wood. Yeah, <laughs> season's not over. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, but in addition to that, if we have a case of, of where we do find our mold, mold and mildew, uh, we address the immediate concern by cleaning it. Um, our housekeeping staff goes in and cleans that um, up. Or if it is in, if it's inside an AC unit, unit or related to an AC Students clean that up. We clean that up, um, and then we address, as um, Phil was saying, we address the the, the cause of the, the root concern. So we looked at what happened to cause that situation because it should not um, normally be happening, and that would be um, service the AC unit or the fan fan coil unit, find out what's going on, see if there is an issue with the window seal is broken or the window was left open or something like that, and then um, if we need to get in that case of humidity control, which sometimes happens in eastern North Carolina, we do have dehumidifiers that we can place in the room for a few days to bring that humidity level back down to a level that um, environmental health and safety feels comfortable with. And so some cases we will place a dehumidifier in a room for a few days and, and, and help bring that really level back down if we find a situation where there's a humidity level without mold or mildew or with mold or mildew, with whichever, to get that humidity level at a safe level where we're not going to be staff is very responsive to complaints, concerns, so it's very important to get those into them uh, as soon as we identify an issue. Um, facility services does an ex excellent job with maintaining the system, uh, but occasionally we do, we do find issues, occasionally, and we respond to those uh, um, to, to address the root problems. So, yeah. And speaking as a parent of a uh, soon-to-be college student uh, who's selecting uh, schools now, uh, I would not have better knowing the systems and the staff mm -hmm. um, I would be very comfortable with, with sending them to, to, to one of our residents. I love that. I love to hear that. In fact, I hope he chooses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do I, too. Yeah, we do too. I know you do. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the last question I've gotten a number of is um, my student has gotten, you know, purchased a mold kit and uh, you know, it's showing mold in the room. And um, Petri dish is designed to grow mold in it, um, as, and, and as Phil was saying, uh, you know, so if you want to talk a little bit more about mold sure, testing. Sure, absolutely. Uh, you will, if you test mold in this room, you'll, you'll be able to identify some mold, no doubt, because there's mold spores everywhere, mm -hmm. outside, inside. Um, but as far as testing for mold, uh, there's no established um, standards for mold in an indoor environment. Um, we rely on um, our regulatory agencies, and, um, such as North Carolina, the HHS, EPA, they do not recommend mold monitoring either because you get results and they don't really tell you a lot mm -hmm. um, because there are no established standards. Um, and if we were to identify an issue anyway, our response would be clean, address the moisture issue, I don't know if there's any specific, maybe some specific questions that mm -hmm. I'll be glad to answer, but mm -hmm. that's in very good detail. Okay, great. Well, if y'all don't have anything else to add, I'm going to circle back around, put my mask on, and close us out. Um, thank you both, Appreciate Phil it. Lewis, not Mike Lewis, Phil Lewis, <laughs> here, um, for joining us today. Um, and thank you for joining us today. I hope we answered some of your questions and concerns. Um, this video will remain on our Facebook page, and it will also um, be captioned and put on our website. The link should be in kind of the description of this video. So again, if you have any other questions, you can put it into the comment section and we'll address it and, and help you get to where you need to go. Or if you have any specific questions, you can reach out to housing at bcu.edu. Um, that's pretty much Aaron's wheelhouse and he'll make sure that you get to where you need to go and get that question answered. If your student has a concern about their, their AC unit or if they you know, might have pressed a button that maybe they shouldn't have or, or, or see something that they're not, you know, super keen on, concerned about, tell them to reach out to the NSO office and get a maintenance request in. And like um, they both said, it will get addressed as quickly as possible. So thank you all for joining us today and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.